Hello, Stitchers. Welcome to Stitch Please, the official podcast of Black Women Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. I'm your host, Lisa Woolfork. I'm a fourth generation sewing enthusiast with more than 20 years of sewing experience. I am looking forward to today's conversation. So sit back, relax, and get ready to get your stitch together. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special episode of the Stitch Fix Podcast. I always hate their special episodes because all the episodes are special. But we are here today talking about sewing spaces. And my guest today, I am so happy to have her, is so, so Stacy. You can find me. <laughs> so, so Stacy from Instagram. She is a fantastic sewist, you all. She, oh. is, she is an amazing powerhouse in her own right. She's a veterinarian. And I'm trying to figure out how I know two veteran, two Black women veterinarians who sew. Like, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Because, you know, Sierra. I was going to say, the fun fact is Sierra was in vet school with me. She was just two classes under me. Like, how? And she's my sorority sister, so I, we're really, yeah. Well, <laughs> I knew that. I knew that you were both in the same sorority, and I think mm-hmm. you all were around the same. Like, I, I just figured that you connected somehow. And so, yes. And I was like, this is really amazing. Lucky me. That's all I have to say. Lucky me, because we didn't know, you know, well, I guess she had been sewing before we went to vet school. I'm not sure, but I didn't start until three years ago. So it was just funny when we both found each other on Instagram, like, hey. <laughs> yes, so, yes. Yeah, we, it's I a didn't party. know she sewed. It's a party. I am so glad. So you said that you've been sewing for three years. Tell mm-hmm. me about the early part of your sewing journey. What made you turn to sewing in the first place? Um. So I'm going to shout out um, Daphne Dansby. Um, She goes by he, he, he plus she. I'm not not sure if you've been to her page. Yes, yes, I do. I do, yes. She is my line sister from Alabama State University. Oh, wonderful. And and Daphne used to sew all the time. Like, not only is she my line sister, she's my back. (laughs) It's just the connections are amazing. Oh, But um, Daphne used to sew and post her stuff all the time. And I just was fascinated by that. I thought it was so cool. So another one of my friends, Latoya, um, she goes by Sky and Bailey Plum on Instagram. But um, Toya would make things. And I just thought it was so cool. Like I would talk to her and I would hear her sewing. And my grandmother taught me how to sew when I was little because I used to bug her. But after I started to move around and stuff for work, I got to the point where I was like, I kind of need a hobby because I'm always somewhere by myself, you know, so I bought a sewing machine, did not open the box for six months, did not, it sat completely sealed, I never broke the tape, nothing, I bought it off off of Amazon, and um, it was the brother, I think, is it 6,000, if it's not 6,000, it's 3,000, but at any Uh rate, I think it's a great beginner machine, but I bought it, and I left it in the box, and I was just afraid, to do anything and um finally Toya told me that Mimi G had the soda can yes so I was like okay well I'll check this out and what I loved about the soda academy um the very first lesson when you go to it Mimi tells you even if you don't have a sewing machine start at lesson one and it's the best I mean she literally walks you through what kind of machine to get and I just thought that was like the best sigh of relief for someone like me who was afraid. Yes. So I finally opened the box six months after I bought it because I relocated. I was living in Hattiesburg, Mississippi at the time, but I relocated to um, Montgomery, Alabama, which I was excited because I went to college in Montgomery, okay. as well as Tuskegee for vet school. And they're down the street from each other. And as soon as I got there, my mom got really ill and almost passed god is good because she did not and she recovered from it but it was just all of a sudden oh thank god had a really bad issue with her gallbladder and pancreas and i mean she was like they had to put her in a medically induced coma and i had to cope with that i had to cope with it so at that point i took the tape off the box Mm. and that was it i started playing the videos from the soda academy and i remember 
our first project, even down to stitching on the paper, on the dot, like, wow. Shout out to Mimi Jean for the Soul Academy because it's awesome. And I'll say after a few months, I used to bug Daphne a lot. And I'm like, Daphne, when you bought your first pattern, you know, were you afraid? What did you do? And I used to ask her that all the time. And she's very sweet and soft-spoken. And one day she just got firm with me and was like, girl, they got to sell it. Joanne, go buy a pattern and get to it. <laughs> she yes. was like, it's going to cost you. You can read directions. You can cook. You can sew. Yeah. And I did it. And I don't know if I'm jumping ahead with questions, but my very first thing that I sewed with a pattern I should have known better, but I stuck with it. I took a pattern that was a top yes. that had a cape attached to it. Uh huh. And I took that and extended it and made an evening gown. Oh, my. And I still can't believe that I did that because one day I went back to that dress and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> the seams were just not good. Like, I cannot believe I did that, but I stuck with it and I wore my gown. I, did. I wore it's it to a banquet and I got a lot of compliments, but the inside of it, I was not ready. But well, practice makes perfect. That's okay. <laughs> and for your first project, that is a very impressive project. I think my first sewing project was a tote bag. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It was not well, a gown. Well, I mean, yeah, I had those things with the Sewing Academy, but on my own. Yes. Your yeah, own. Like, I just can't believe I did that. And I didn't realize how courageous and scary that was until it was Green Week of So Happy Color. Oh, my. And I posted that first one, and I was like, I cannot believe I did that. <laughs> Good for you, though, to go from a, a, a someone who was quite fearful or trepidatious and then to become rather fearless. I think that's really amazing. It's very impressive. And the story of your, your growth and transformation. And now you've had opportunities to do other things in the salon community. Um, I recall you mentioning um, the, so the, the, the Project So Atlanta the, uh, mm -hmm. that Nikki runs. Um, mm -hmm. I'm calling it Projects. I think that's the wrong name for it. Sewing no. Lifestyle. Atlanta Sewing Style. Atlanta yeah, so, Sewing Style. Yeah, so I'll clear up the name. So the project so is actually Monica. That's so That's Monica. Right. That's right. And so it's the project so, and it started in Dallas. That's and right. um, Monica and I just it was fate that day when we all met because I was in Montgomery, hadn't been sewing but like five minutes. Right. And uh, right after the green dress, <laughs> and I saw the project so was coming to Atlanta. Yeah. And I was like, that's kind of, no, I saw they had one for Dallas and I commented on it when I found the Instagram page yes. and Monica commented and said, Hey, I'm coming to Atlanta. So I bought a ticket and there were so many of us that since that one time, I haven't seen all of us together in that one room again, wow. but a lot of people that I follow, we all met that day. And so yeah, Monica, like I said, that's her project. And she started it up for Atlanta and Nikki has, you know, when, right. when we could meet in person, you know, right. Nikki would be the person for right. running Project So Atlanta. Right. But Atlanta Sewing Style is Nikki's baby. Nikki project. That's and, her baby. Yeah. Yes. And the from the that photo day, shoot, the photo yeah. shoots and stuff that she does. And awesome. have, you, have you participated in some of those events? Some of the Atlanta Sewing Style events? I have the... I know I've done one. I'm trying to think if I've done another, but the one for me was when we went to Tyler Perry Studios. Mm -hmm. That was so cool. It was, was a vintage car show. cars. That was the vintage cars, right? Oh, it was the vintage car show. And I thought that was really cool because basically we all made dresses to accommodate or complement whatever car yes. we were going to, you know, accent. So it was beautiful. It was cold, but again, was it cold. Oh my goodness! It I was could have been raining. Photos, y'all looked amazing. Y'all was all stunting. It, it, it did not look like y'all was cold. Yeah, it, it was survival of the fittest that day. But we had so much fun. You would not know, but it like the ground was wet because it had rained. Oh no! It, but we had so much fun. Like I just, I love Atlanta sewing style. Love those ladies. I just had the best time with them. I do appreciate them. And you've also been doing some work with mood as well, right? You 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 hosted one of the Sew Your Views, which was a was it a mood pattern? 
That's that was actually a McCall's pattern. A McCall's pattern. So tell me yeah. about So Your View. I know, I believe that that's another kind of very popular Instagram challenge and Monica has been, you know, really, you know, in, in the front Monica's of so that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so what was it like doing a So Your View? That was really cool because although I used to be a teacher before becoming a veterinarian and mm -hmm. I'll still teach an uh, adjunct class here and there at a community college or something. Oh, nice. But um, to teach someone, you know, to physically record myself, edit and all of that, I had never done that before. So I was really afraid, but I'm so glad that I did it because that really gave me another like boost of confidence. I, I never would have thought I would have done something like that. And another challenge I had was I have to travel for my job. Okay. And um, the pandemic had just broken out and I, I'm a federal veterinarian, so I don't work in clinics. I do public, public safety, like food. Yeah. And um, we were short staff and I had to, like the week that I had planned to record my video, I got details to go work in like Southwest Mississippi. Oh my word. So I was afraid not to go work, but because, oh my goodness, this thing that I need to do, I have to pretty much pack up my car right. and do it from the hotel room. It was so much fun. I took my table that I'm sitting at right now. It's just a folding table that I got from um, Home Depot. Uh -huh. I drilled down my self-healing mat yes. from my rotary. I drilled down two of them so I could still fold the table. Yes. I packed up my car. And I took my tripod, my camera, and I went to work. So it was great. And I think that probably made it better because if I wasn't at work, that was the only distraction I had. Right. You know, I wasn't at home right. doing other stuff. So right. that was great. And I would love, honestly, I don't care where or who, I would actually love to do another solo alone. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Uh-huh. And I have a really great tutorial, well, so alone for my blue coat that I made for, um, oh. I can't get the name out, <laughs> the, that I made for um, Minerva, as a Minerva maker. Oh, Minerva maker, uh-huh. But I'm having, I was having trouble getting the video to upload. It's just, it's, it's been a task. Oh, so, um, yeah, I, I like doing the so alone but I just really haven't had the chance to really get into it like I should, but, um, but I love it. Just bottom line. I, I appreciate the effort now that I see when you see so long and you've made one, you really appreciate somebody's I time. I have not effort. done one, but I, I, <laughs> I have not done one, but I have heard that from people who have led them and it just seems like so much work, not just to make the garment, but also to break down the steps in such a way that people can pick them up and understand. And then to film it too. It's just like, oh my gosh, it's like stacks on stacks on stacks of work. So congratulations. And I will say this for anybody listening, for anybody listening, um, cause Nikki and I talked about this cause I reached out to Nikki not too long ago and I was like, I am having the hardest time getting this so long up. Like, what do I need to do? If you are sewing, if you are filming a sew alone, do not press record until you are ready for somebody to see you do what you're doing. Huh. So the issue that I'm having with this one sew alone, and even though it's April, y'all gonna get this coat, okay? I, I don't care if it's June, you gonna. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a you May coat. It'll coat, be a okay? September coat, but the coat. Okay, you're gonna be the cutest thing out there when it gets cold because you're gonna get this sew along in the hot month. But, um, I was pressing play. I mean, well, record. Yeah. And, you know, I would do a little something, turn around, get something to drink, just whatever. The longer your clips are, because you're going to do a lot of footage, you know, you're going to start and stop, start and stop. The longer those clips are, the longer it's going to take to import. And I had like five hours worth of footage and I was trying to chop it down but my system is just not happy wow. with how much footage I have. So anybody that's filming a solo long, do not press record until you are ready to record that step. Don't waste the time and the space on your phone. Camera, oh. whatever it is you're using, please. If I've never told you nothing else, don't press record until you are ready. And as soon as you're done, press stop. 
And that's less editing for later. Less editing for later. And so the issue of mine was mine went to the iCloud mm -hmm. and it's always wanting to download when I'm trying to get back to it. Uh, and after you put your footage together, yes. after so long, you end up with like five hours worth of footage. Oh, good gosh. And trying to edit that, and sometimes the system doesn't want to work, it's been a headache. So, oh my yeah, that was a lesson learned for me. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that with us so that we can avoid that misstep. So thank you. So, so let's look at, let's talk about your sewing space. You built this space. When did you start, you know, you finally, finally opened the box that had your sewing machine in it. <laughs> you needed a stress relief. You needed something to do to take your mind off the stressful situation that you were in with your mother's health crisis. And thank God, I'm glad she is well. I'm glad she's better. Yes. Um, and so you've done that. And now you're like, okay, where am I going to sew? How did, what, how did you decide to set up your sewing room or your sewing space? How did that, how did you come to that or arrive at that decision? So this answer is going to be fun because um, when I first started sewing, I was living in Montgomery. I bought the sewing machine in Hattiesburg, Mississippi okay. in that apartment. A year later, I moved to Montgomery because the whole name of the game with my job is you get a job in the agency and you work your way back home. Okay? okay. So I was trying to get back home. It was not a secret. Everybody that I've worked for has known that because you do the same job. It's just different locations. Right. And so I set up the spot um, in Hattiesburg, never opened the box, moved to Montgomery in June of 2018, June of 2018. And then, um, I used my second bedroom in my apartment as my sewing space. Okay. And I had just a little cheap desk. I think I may have gotten it from like Big Lots. Yeah. And I would say the only true like um, notions and tools and stuff. I mean, I had a bunch of thread. I had some scissors. Like I had the minimum, you know, I just, I was starting out. So yeah. I set up that second bedroom and that was cool. And then when I moved, they had a position open such that I could move back to Birmingham uh -huh. a year after that. So I moved home and I moved in with my mom and, you know, cause it was so quick. So came home and um, there was no space. I literally had a folding card table wow. in my mom's dining room. I kept my folding table folded in half behind my bedroom door and I would pull it out and lay it on my bed <laughs> to cut my fabric. I had a folding table, card table, and my folding fabric table. Everything else I just kind of kept stacked up in areas. I wouldn't buy a lot of fabric. Right. So I didn't have a whole lot on purpose. Okay. Well, not too long after I moved home, my mom bought another house. And the house that I grew up in that I had just moved back into, oh, I ended up getting that from my mom. So oh, I went from a card table to a whole house. Oh, my goodness. And that was cool. And then all of a sudden, I started realizing I was accumulating a lot of stuff. So what used to be the den, which um, when I was little was my sister's room. Uh -huh. But what used to be the den is now my sewing room. And as you know, when I talked to you last summer, um, uh, and it might even been, it was last year, It was, but I was trying to find a good sewing table because I had moved that little rinky dink desk oh God. all over the place. And it was on its last leg. And I told you, it got to the point I was so, and the table was shake, a leg was wobbling. I was like, yeah, this ain't gonna make it too much longer. <laughs> yeah. Especially with so all your precious went, stuff on there. You don't want your machine to hit the ground either. Exactly, exactly. And I didn't even have a surgery at first. So okay. I knew when the surgery went on there, that was just it. So I ended up going to um, a furniture store, which is not here anymore. The place is called Offer, like O-F-R. Okay. And basically it was the same stuff you would see at Ashley Furniture and other places. But I guess it was like a, like a, almost like Wayfair. Like okay. they had too much stuff. So yeah, like over stocks type thing. Exactly. But you would come in and make them the best offer. Oh my. So, um, I ended up 
buying a table, which is actually a dinner table. And I love wood, like thick wood. I, I'm just, you can't beat that. I love yeah. wood floors. I just love wood. Yeah. So I ended up, I think I paid maybe 300 for the table, but it has leaps that you can take off the yeah. side so you can make it longer, you make it shorter. And I love it. It gives me just enough room. And so I have my sewing machine and my serger side by side. I have a lot of things in here, but I don't have a lot of things mounted to the wall, like my things for my spool of thread. Yes. And that's because I want to paint in here, oh. but I can't stop sewing long enough to go ahead and paint. So wow. <laughs> that would so help you, me if oh my I goodness. And did that, but it, it hasn't happened. Wow. I love this, this about the dining room table. I don't think I would have thought furniture store, you know? Yeah. And so I think that's so clever, especially the expandability of it, that you could add one leaf, you could add both leaves, mm -hmm. you could make it that much bigger. You were saying earlier when we were speaking that you could invite a friend over to sew mm -hmm. with you because the, the idea of having a table that could shrink and grow is pretty yeah. smart. And yeah. people figure that out for dining rooms because you want to have guests over to eat and stuff. But it also applies for sewing because sometimes you don't need a table to be so big um, and right. it still meet your needs and everything. But then sometimes you want it to be large so that you can get other friends to come and sew with you. So that's pretty fun. It's smaller than my dining room table, but uh -huh. the width of it is awesome. I mean, it's literally like if I pulled it out from the wall, I could put somebody in their sewing machines on one side and I'm on the other, and it's still plenty of room. Like, I, it was the perfect buy for this room. Oh, that is so great. And because I think that makes a really big difference, you know, like the idea of having a good um, workflow. Now, let me ask you some people like to keep their sewing machines at an L. So they'll have like an L with like the sewing machine here and then the serger there. But you have yours side by side. Well, I think mine are side by side as well, or not? Are they not side by side? They're side by side. I initially wanted to have the L set up, but a friend gifted me. So, what was it that Stacy's friend gave her that made her change her mind about her L configuration? Stay tuned, and you will find out after the break. Black Women Stitch and the Stitch Please podcast are happy to announce that we have another way to connect with our community. In addition to the IG Lives that we do every Thursday at 3 p.m., we also now have a club on Clubhouse. That's right, friends. They done messed up and given me the chance to have a club. Follow Black Women Stitch on Instagram and now on Clubhouse Thursdays at 3 p.m. on Instagram and 3.45 p.m. on Clubhouse Eastern Standard Time. And we'll help you get your stitch together. Welcome back, friends. You're listening to the Stitch Please podcast, and I'm talking today with So So Stacy, Stacy Sturdivant, who is talking about her sewing space as part of a limited series that I will be doing on sewing spaces. Please note that Patreon supporters receive a video of this episode. Before the break, Stacy was explaining why she did not have an L configuration in her sewing room. So she's going to show us this and let us know why she made that decision. Here we go. Uh, but a friend gifted me, you know how you go in department stores? Yeah, I want to see. Ooh, I like that rack. That is cool. You see this rack right here? Yeah, so his friend's mom passed and she used to have okay. a tailor shop. And they were getting rid of stuff, and they knew that right. I just really gotten into sewing. And he was like, hey, if you come over here, you can get whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. So just take it on with you. So I went, I got that, and honestly, everything on there I made, but I kind of use it more as a drying rack for, you know, dresses <laughs> and stuff that I've made. Right, so right. I'm not going to put them in the dryer. But, yeah, if I didn't have that, I yes. would have dug the L. 
but I, but yes, corner, yes. I and do you, my... for your seating, what do you do for seating? Do you have a rolling chair or do you like, how do you, what, what's your deal with seating? So I don't have a rolling chair, um, again, because I have such <laughs> lovely people in my life. Um, oh, that's that pretty. Know, he had like, there's a really, now y'all don't go to this store and buy up all the stuff because this is my spot, okay? But um, <laughs> there is a consignment shop here in Birmingham called Sozo's, S-O-Z-O. And every now and then I'll tag myself in things that I bought from there because it it's a consignment shop, but the setup is so cool because most of, I think all of the proceeds or a big chunk of it go to the Sozo tribe okay. in Africa. Okay. And it benefits the children. But when you go in, it's like the middle of the store is a boutique of okay. things that people have made from in yes. Sozo, like in Africa, and they've shipped it to the store. Oh. And they sell okay. those okay. authentic. And then you have the true thrift store part of the store. And around the perimeter, people have um they oh. set up boutiques. So That's a it's great just such a cool store and they have the best stuff. Like I have decorated my house with a lot of wow. cool things that you find in there. My mom's friend had this chair. He got it restored, but then he bought something else. And he was like, I only got one chair. I don't really have a need for it. But it just looks like some Stacy would like. Tell her she likes it, she can have it. And I brought it here. Wow. And that's pretty much my chair. That is awesome. Yep. It's cushion. It's perfect. It's good. And it, it goes with That's great. All of my furniture. Now, so. tell me about how do you store your notions, your, like, the zippers, um, your scissors, your buttons, and those kind of things. Do you have, do you have a special place for everything? Do you, do you use bins and boxes? Do you have drawers? Do you, how do you, how do you deal with that? So at this point, I just think I may need to just take my phone and turn my camera around because it. Yes, I want to walk through. Yes, please. please. Okay. It's just that I'm so good you have to share. Please okay. do. So here we go. Love it. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So my zippers, you remember when, when I went crazy over the 50 cents yes, and I I, zippers mm -hmm. at Hobby Lobby? Oh my, nice. Yes. Yeah, and I haven't even put a dent in them and I've made a lot of things. Okay. But I have some zippers there in that roller cart. There were some yep. that are just yep. kind of free. And I've been sewing a lot yes. with bias tape. So it's kind of mixed in here. It was set up <laughs> all cute and stuff before, but <laughs> I have a bias tape maker. Never took it out. Oh, house. you got to take that out. Is. And I have a ribbon. Lace, yeah. Like lace trim. Um, okay, ribbon. Um, uh huh. Rogaine ribbon. Oh, um, yeah. cuffs, you know, I love that. Like a sweatshirt or something. Just all kinds of stuff stashed down in there. Yep, I got on. I got my house socks on too. Um, oh. <laughs> so I'll step back just a little bit. Oh, great. Okay, so you keep them side by. Oh, look, you have a sharp thing. It's like a real one. Like a real thing. Oh, yeah. So listen, go to the beauty supply store, oh. you guys, and get you a the sharp beauty container for like $2. And you can't go. You could probably get one in Sally's, but I mean, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, go, go to the hair store. The yeah, go to the and hair store and the or the beauty <laughs> supply store. I didn't know they had this. So, yeah, I paid like $2 or something for that $2.99. Wow. That's but amazing. Yeah, I keep that. All of my needles uh -huh, uh -huh. are pretty much here. And I'm going to turn it back. Sorry. Hope this doesn't mess with your recording. But I even have like some oh, iron on patches. Oh, look at that's so cute. What a cute little drawer. Yeah, just any clear little container that I yeah, can Yeah, that's Walmart awesome. To get them. So these um, thread holders, of course, they could be mounted to the wall. I'm just not you ready paint. because I'm truly going to paint. You're going to paint. Like, it just has to happen. Um, let's see. 
Oh, oh yeah, good. Okay. Right yeah. Here. Yeah. I have another little uh -huh. rack that's just sitting here. Yeah. Um, Taylor's yep. chalk, wax paper for tracing, just our extra yep. bobbins. Yep. Um, oh, and I have this oh, bobbin yeah. container. I love it because you keep so many on one oh, side. Oh, that's so and cute. So many on the other. <laughs> a I love those dishes. I have one of those pen. from Harbor Freight. Oh, that's cute. What is that with the, the way you have your yes. pins? Like they're in some kind of little cage around the top? Um, yeah, so this is huh. a little pen holder. This one is, um, you know, you have a little decoration yeah. in the bathroom, like toothbrush holder. I bought two of those and I just. Oh, that's so cute. So it just is what it is. <laughs> um, I have my. Rotary cutters. Mm -hmm. I only cut out my fabric with rotary nice. cutters. This is for my fabric. This is for when I'm I'm cutting out patterns. I rarely use my scissors. Rarely. Of course, um, my surgery thread. And this is just my quick grab. Whatever I need is right Please. here. Um. This is my oh, true right. desk okay. for work. So I just kind of turn to my side. I'm either over here truly working. Um, and for what I do, I have to keep like sampling supplies. Oh, and stuff I in see. There. So that's, that's work, that's work, 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 work. Even look over here. <laughs> oh, wow. Look um, at your fabric. This is fabric. Yeah, and I'm trying to do better. Um, I've tried to separate my fabric mm -hmm. by type. So there may be a little something thrown in, okay. you know, other places, but. For the most part, everything like these are like yeah. my workout mitts and stuff. So yeah, that's great. All of that craziness here. <laughs> this oh. is a jewelry box that started out true as being a jewelry box, but I pretty much use wow. it for now. Just all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Like accessories, pins, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's so cool. You need a little place yes. for all those little tiny things. Oh, for my buttons too. Yes. Yeah, so these are like my everyday buttons. And then this one are yeah. like my fancy buttons. Um, uh -huh. more storage. I bought this bookshelf. Oh yeah. Turn this to the side. And I pushed it up against the wall so it's more storage, but out of the yes, way. Like you right. can't even really see it. Depending right, on right, what's right. in the room. And are those on the bookshelf, um, are those patterns? Fun thing. These that is so patterns. interesting to organize them on a bookshelf. And, and the depth of the shelf looks yes. perfect. Yes. So the top row huh. is all simplicity. The second row, the first half is McCall's. This is, you name it. Yes. Um, yes. Buttery, yes. quick sew, those kind of mixed in. And then my bold patterns. And it's amazing. As much as I love Vogue patterns, I, mean, I don't have as many, but I am always reaching for a Vogue That is so funny that you them. like to sew them so much, but then you can look to see like, but what you really buy tends to be the simplicity. I think I might be the same, actually. I think right. I might have more simplicity than anything, which is weird. Yep. Yep. Um, this is just my overflow. That's a cute I mean, little you know, sewing box, like though. That's adorable. I need it. Thank you. And just more overflow in here. Yep, I have that same box. Clip. Does it have those Victorian children on it? And I never saw Your box, the, the box with the pins, does it have the Victorian children on it? Yep, I, I gave those I away because I gave those away because I wanted the children to be turned around. Oh, yes, that's the one. That's the same one. Those very terrifying looking children. Yeah. yeah, I gave those to a friend and she was supposed to make them brown. I don't know how that's going, but um, Oh, I never really put the lid on. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> but um, I bought these pattern weights. Oh, that's so that cute. <laughs> so, yeah, I just bought a bunch of washers. This is definitely uh -huh. the Mimi G pack that she talked about. Yeah. So I just bought some washers. And to and add for a way to make them cute. Oh, that's so cute. Throw game ribbon and put some pearls on them that's and great now you said that right you there. screwed down or bolted down your um cutting mat how did you do that uh -huh. i just took a drill and just drill down like right here right here i did two on the other side 
And is this just a plastic folding table we're looking at? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So that is a, right that is another and I position them such that I can fold this table up and stick it wherever wow. I want. Wow. That is amazing. I mean, that is very clever. <laughs> I had not thought cuz I'm always like of course annoyed if a mat shifts, but I never thought about how to get it to not shift. That's what made me do it because I was so sick of them shifting. And I know that you can like yes. custom order them. But I was like, if I get one that completely covers the table, right. I can never fold the table if I mount it down. So I'm happy with this. I have a little hiccup like in the right. room every now and then that I may have to use my scissors right. as opposed to my rotary cutter. But that's that. So up at the top, this is a bookshelf. Well, I keep most of my shoes. Oh, here my goodness. That's a nice rack, though. Shoes. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. But cordless iron. Regular iron. Um, I can't remember which brand that is. And the steamer is my new best friend, especially that now I take my own pictures. So for my backdrop, I steam them. Yes. The wrinkles will yes, happen. that's so clever. Sewing wow, library. I know I have that. Look, some of those look very familiar. I have some of those. I know I have that Singer Perfect Fit book. And now these binders, like some of your own things that you've collected. Yeah, this binder is um, empty because uh -huh. it's a newer one. Um, right here, I have. Oh yeah, yeah. Pattern. Yeah, so these are like my true books. Oh, my sister good. bought me this one. Um, I think I bought this fashion design book because Raven yes. um, mentioned yes. that one. I think she recommended it, so I bought that. These are just. <laughs> no, don't worry about that. Those are just old <gasps> notebooks that I don't throw away. <laughs> but in here, wow. these are loaded down with mm -hmm. um, instructions for different patterns. And yes. I have them tabbed out. I'll pull, let me see. I'll pull one. Oh, that's, oh, I love, that's a really nice different. looking notebook. Yeah, I, that's like a obsession of mine. Like uh -huh. Really pretty binders. And I just, I tab out the instructions according to what it is so just different things some of these i haven't even made but they're ready to go great when i'm ready so these are the other three instruction booklets for my sewing machine my uh -huh. sewer, and in here are all of my pdf patterns that need <gasps> to be pulled out oh my gosh why are you taping yeah. patterns sis why are you taping cool. patterns well, this was in the beginning. I, you know, first became, um, you know, familiar with PDF. So that's why they're still here. Because now I take okay. them and get them printed. But before we were doing that, you know, we were printing and and I just don't always have the time. <laughs> so they're going to live there until I'm ready to pull them out <laughs> one day. This is just, if I want to make panties or something like that, I have all the elastic waiting my ham and such more elastic um my, well this is not really a secret but my sorority is doing pillowcase oh, dresses for little girls in africa so that's a project okay. that i work on in my spare time so ah i see i see yeah this is some leather making oh, yeah, stuff yeah. Um, yeah. I go in here every now and then yeah, so I don't do leather too, too much. I mean, oh my gosh, I know. The bomb. Like, if I, I mean, just be like her work is day, so her work is so good. And I was telling her, I spoke with her for the podcast last year, and I was like, I tried to sign up yeah. for your class, and I made the mistake of waiting till the end of the day, and it was gone. She was like, Yeah, I know. Like those that class <laughs> sold out in two hours. I was like, I'm big. But she's just she so is. cool, so she really is. And so talented. But this is just overflow of fabric that I haven't touched yet. Some um um crinkly yeah. faux fur. Yeah, make a faux fur jacket in a minute. So I'll pop out with that and think nothing of it. But that's it. I keep my sewing. I mean, I'm sewing my um ironing board behind the door, and then I have a little small one. That has yeah. become my best friend. 
because I don't have. Oh my, leave. yeah, you know, it's so it looks like a so it's a sleeve board, but you just use it like a regular ironing board. That I is really very. Is that is genius. <laughs> that is that is. Yeah, I loved it. It was like I think I got it for when Hobby Lobby was still doing oh, okay. like forty percent off coupon. Um, wow. Got it for like seven bucks. <laughs> But that's oh my gosh, Stacy, this is amazing. Oh my word, thank you yeah, so man. much for sharing your space with us. And I have learned so much from you. I can just off the top of my head, hair store for sharks. Never would have thought that. Never would have thought about that. Yeah. Like, okay, that's so that's like that's new on me. Drilling down, drilling your mat to your plastic table. I don't know why I thought that was, that mm -hmm. never occurred to me. Genius move. If there was something else you had done. <laughs> I'll think of it when I go back and review the tape. I just think this is, this, this is so much fun. You have so many wonderful ideas and hacks and stuff. So what's, what's next for you? Oh, the dining room table where you add the leaves. But you don't have to show me. Yeah, oh yeah. I don't. You don't have to show that. You don't have to show that. But I was just like, it's just like, it's just okay. these ideas. And one of the reasons I wanted to do the Sewing Spaces series was so that people could get ideas for how to use their own space. I love the natural light that your room has. Um, that is really, really Thank nice. You. And I'm sure like you could, if you felt like it, you could crack the window, but I know it's hot down there. So you probably don't want to crack no windows, but you can look out and see your, you know, your yard and the natural light coming in. It's just wonderful. It's yeah i'm real big on natural light um even down to taking pictures like yes. i do pictures in the house just because yes. you know i live alone and it's just more convenient right, than right. always bugging somebody because i can take yes. my own pictures outside and it's beautiful but for safety purposes i just don't think anybody mm -hmm. should take pictures by themselves right with right. their real right. camera um so yeah it's just, that's just my thing right it's right sketchy right. in the world <laughs> But um, but yeah, I got all my windows replaced in my house oh, back in October. So I will either let a window down or let it up and just get the cool breeze. I love when it's sunny out. Oh, that is so light. wonderful. Well, well, with that I love Thank light you. is a perfect note on which for us to end this wonderful conversation. I am so grateful for you taking the time to walk us through your space. So tell us. Thank you, because I never would have even thought to show it. So thank you for asking me to do it, because I, I just didn't think anybody would have cared to see what's a, going on in here. The only thing I didn't show, I have a, it's a calendar. Oh, I saw that. I did see it. So do you use that to manage your projects? Somewhat. Um, I more so will take a sticky note and write whatever, and I'll put it like yeah. in order. You know, I may put the days up there, but for the most part, I'll just kind of put them in order. And when I finish one, I love the fulfillment I get of taking oh, one down. Oh, that's a <laughs> great tracker. I feel accomplished. Oh, I that's what well, I had not thought about using post-its as a tracker, too. That is so smart. That's how I do it for work. I like to put down everything okay. I need to do on a sticky note. The goal is to get through the sticky note. I have a planner and all of that, but if I can get through my sticky notes, I like it. Someone, I had heard that technique from someone else <laughs> that you know that basically everything you want to do needs to fit on a sticky note, right? Like you don't need like a, a list yep. to do list for every day that's like this, you know? Yeah, because it's just mm -hmm. impossible to get all that done. But if I can make it oh, that's great, notes, and then you got sticky notes for your sewing too. I love it. Yay! Stacey, this has yep. been so wonderful. Um, tell folks where they can find you out there in these internet social media streets. All right. If you're looking for me, honey, you can find me anywhere as So So Stacey. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, if you were to email me, it would be So So Stacey 18. For whatever reason, I couldn't get So So Stacey. Like, who else is? Especially with Stacey spell like mine, but so so Stacey 18, 18 is the year that I started sewing. So 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 Stacey 18 at Gmail. And um my blog, I love the Wix app. 
but I just it's no quick way for me to tell oh you how to get to my blog. So um, you probably okay. should just put that in the show notes because it's just <laughs> it's kind of lengthy, and I need to take it upon myself yes. to do it lengthy because yes. you know, I've just not done that. But but that's it. I'm so so Stacy everywhere. Email social Stacy eighteen at gmail, and then the super that's right. Well, we I will find that, and I'll make sure it's in the show months. notes so people can just <laughs> click on it without having to figure out how to find it. So we will definitely take care of that. Stacey, thank you so much for sharing your space with us. This has been really wonderful. I am looking forward to getting this episode out in the world. And just thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Thank you. You've been listening to the Stitch Please podcast the official podcast of Black Women Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. We appreciate you supporting us by listening to the podcast. If you'd like to reach out with, to us with questions, you can contact us at blackwomenstitch at gmail.com. If you'd like to support us financially, you can do that by supporting us on Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, and you can find Black Women Stitch there in the Patreon directory. And for as little as $2 a month, you can help support the project with things like editing, transcripts, and other things to strengthen the podcast. And finally, if financial support is not something you can do right now, you can really, really help the podcast by rating it and reviewing it anywhere you listen to podcasts that allows you to review them. So I know that not all podcasts Um, directories or services allow for reviews but for those who do for those that have like a star rating or just ask for a few comments if you could share those comments and say nice things about us at the Stitch Please podcast that is incredibly helpful thank you so much come back next week and we'll help you get your stitch together